Oh hey guys, I got some new tires for my scooter. These tires are a little bit bigger than what's on here, and they're called dual sport tires. They have this knobby tread pattern. I'll start by looking at my old tires. The size is 120-70-12. What that means is the tire is 120 millimeters wide, the sidewall height is 70% of that, so about 84 millimeters. The wheel on my scooter is 12 inches in diameter. Let's see what tires Parts for Scooters has. They have a pretty good selection. Check these guys out. Wow, look at that tread. I don't really need snow tires. Also, they're out of stock and expensive. The Duro HF903 looks sweet too. I only like the things I can't have. I wonder if they make this tire in another size. Okay, it looks like I can order the tires in 130-70-12. That's 10 millimeters wider than my old tires and a taller sidewall too. Will these tires fit? Probably not. I'll buy them anyway. With the scooter on the center stand, I'll need to add this basket to get the front wheel up. The front wheel is the easy one, so we'll start here. Hold the axle with a 14mm wrench and loosen the nut on the other side with a 17mm. Now the axle just pulls straight out. Move the wheel down and out of the brake. That's not so bad, right? It gets harder. Let's get that front tire off the rim. Some valve caps have a valve core remover tool built in. Taking the valve core out gets all the air out fast. This is the hard part. Use tire levers to break the bead away from the rim. It will be stuck and it will take a lot of force. You want to push the bead into the drop center of the rim. The center is smaller in diameter and will let the tire be loose enough to get it off the wheel. I'm adding some interior detailing spray to lube the tire. Soapy water works fine too. Now I just need to break the bead loose on the other side. I'm adding lube to this side too. Notice my foot holding the tire down into the drop center of the rim as I pull the bead up and over with the tire lever. If you don't get the other side of the tire down into the drop center, you won't be able to get the tire off. Now the other bead. Same thing, I'm holding the tire bead into the drop center while I pull the opposite bead off the rim. Just one more good shove and this tire is off the wheel. I'm cleaning up the rim a bit, then cutting the old valve off with a knife. The next step is installing the new tire. I got a new valve from PartsForScooters.com. Use vice grips or pliers to gently pull it into place. Be careful not to tear the rubber valve. The bent valve makes it easier to air up your tires. Okay, I'll start with a little slippery spray, then make sure the tire tread is pointing in the right direction. Push the rim into the tire at an angle, then help the first bead with the tire levers. Just one more push, and this side is done. I'm using my foot to hold the tire into the drop center of the rim as I go around and pull the bead over the rim with tire levers. The tire is more likely to be balanced if you line up the yellow circle with the valve. It doesn't really matter, but that's where it goes. I took out the valve core so I can air up the tire faster. Sometimes you need a fast blast of air from a compressor to seat the beads of the tire on the rim. Both sides of the tire snapped into place so I can reinstall the valve core and finish airing up the tire. I'm using a good bicycle pump with a gauge to set my tire pressure to 36 psi. Remember to clean the brake rotor with brake parts cleaner or alcohol. That was pretty easy so far, right? Don't worry, it gets worse. Installing the front wheel is harder than removing it. The side with the brake has a rubber seal and takes a spacer. You'll want to spread the front brake pads open a little using a clean tire lever. Next, just take the caliper mount off the fork. This makes everything much easier. This part is the speedometer puck. Rotate it so the tabs in the wheel snap into place. You can juggle the parts all at once or start with the axle. Then install the speedometer puck and push the axle back flush. Hold the wheel up and push the axle through the wheel. Turn until it snaps into the speedometer puck. Now insert the spacer and push the axle through the other side of the fork. Chinese scooters tend to fall apart, so be sure to add some Loctite here. Tighten the front axle to 68 newton meters with your torque wrench or as tight as you can with regular wrenches. Now just push the brake caliper and pads over the rotor. The brake bolts don't go as tight as the axle. Loctite is a good idea here too. 
This next step is a bit weird, but let me explain. I want to lay the scooter on its side to work on the back wheel. You don't have to do it this way, but I think it's easier. My gas cap is terrible and will surely leak all the gas onto my garage floor if I tip this scooter. This cheap fluid transfer pump made pumping all the gas out very quick and easy. Now that my gas tank is empty, I don't have to worry. I'm tipping my scooter over so the seat is on the basket. You don't have to lay down your scooter, but this one's been crashed a lot so I don't care, and it will be easier to work on the tire. The muffler is right in front of the back wheel, so it will have to come off. Start at the front of the exhaust pipe where it's bolted to the engine. Take two nuts off using a 10mm socket with a long extension. The muffler has two big bolts attaching it to the engine. Pull the front of the pipe down and away from the engine, then pull the pipe out. With the exhaust pipe and muffler out of the way, removing the rear wheel is easy. Jam a pry bar under the transmission case to stop the wheel from turning, and remove the nut using a 21mm socket. Pull the wheel toward you, and it should slide off the spindle. While we're in here, it would be a good idea to check out the rear brake. The brake drum surface inside the wheel looks good. The rear brake shoes are held in by springs. Mine are getting thin, but still have some life left. Use brake parts cleaner to clean up the brake. This cam pushes on the brake shoes. Let's set it all the way loose. Then just pop the brake shoes into place. That was easy. When you pull the brake cable, this cam pushes the brake shoes out against the drum. Add just a little bit of grease to the spindle. Don't get any grease in the brake. After all this extra work, I can finally replace the back tire. It's the same procedure as the front. Remove the valve core, then go around the tire, breaking the bead loose from the rim. Loose means you can move the whole side of the tire and push it into the drop center of the rim. I'm adding a little lube to make it easier, then breaking the bead on the other side. I got lucky and this tire wasn't very stuck. Notice my foot is pressing the tire bead into the drop center of the wheel. This makes it easy to pull the tire off the opposite side with tire levers. I got the final bead started, then just gave a good solid push. Cut the old valve off and install the new one. Push it in and gently pull on it with vice grips or pliers. Or just pull hard and rip the valve like I did. Damn it, those valves are made of shitty rubber. Fortunately, you can just get these car valves at your local auto parts store. They don't tear as easily and fit just fine. Okay, it's time to install the new back tire. I used interior detailing spray, but you can also use soapy water to make the tire slippery. Make sure the tire tread is pointing in the right direction. Then just push the tire onto the rim. These 12 inch wheels are easy to work with. My foot is always holding the tire into the drop center opposite of the tire levers. Line up the valve with the yellow mark for the best tire balance. I left the valve core in this time, and I can seat the tire bead just fine using a compressor. A straight valve is less convenient than a bent valve, but it still works with a pump. I set my tire pressure to 36 psi using a bicycle pump. Make sure the inside of the brake drum is clean, and you're ready to put your scooter back together. The rear wheel is ready to go back on, so just put it on. Chinese scooters tend to fall apart, so adding Loctite here is a good idea. Use a 21mm socket and jam a pry bar above the transmission case to stop the wheel from turning. Notice the center stand is also holding the pry bar, and I'm holding the scooter with my foot. Tighten to 116 newton meters. Installing the exhaust is pretty simple, but you have to be careful with it. The studs on the cylinder head are small and can get bent or stripped out easily. I bought a gasket and stud kit from Parts for Scooters, and I'm going to replace mine. I need to thread in the new studs, but I can't just grab them with vice grips. I'm locking two nuts together so I can tighten the stud without damaging the threads. A little Loctite won't hurt, although I'm not sure if it can handle high temperatures. Now just tighten the studs into the cylinder head. Turn the nut closer to the engine clockwise and the nuts will come loose from each other. Now I can take them off with my fingers. It's ready for the new exhaust gasket. Clean the sealing surface with a wire wheel and the exhaust is ready to go back in. I set it roughly in the right place, then slid the front of the pipe over the studs. Install the nuts, but don't tighten them yet. You want to install all the bolts, then go back and tighten. The longer muffler bolt takes the lower position. Add Loctite to these so they don't fall out later. Tighten the two muffler bolts most of the way. Now go back and torque the front exhaust bolts at the engine. Now torque the muffler bolts. 
I'm all done with the rear wheel and exhaust stuff so I could pick the scooter up and set it on the center stand. While the rear wheel was off, I cleaned the rear brake. Now I just need to make sure it's adjusted properly. First, my brake lever gets stuck. That's not very good. Let's pull this cable out of here. What's this rubber piece? I want to get that out of there. It's jamming up the brake cable. The cable looks like it's in good condition, but it's old, so I'll lube it with some triflow. The cable is smooth now and doesn't get stuck. Let's reinstall the cable end into the lever, then pull the cable housing into place. Now the lever feels good and doesn't get stuck. Tighten the nut at the back brake with your fingers. When it gets hard to turn, the brake is tight enough. It should still be easy to turn the rear wheel. The brake lever pulls the cable that moves this lever and engages the rear brake. Make sure the lever is tight enough that you can't pull it all the way to the handlebar. The new tires look great, but the front tire looks like it will hit the back of the fender when the fork moves. The back tire isn't hitting the spring, but it does rub on this mud flap. That's not a big deal. I can trim the mud flap. And since I had this scooter on its side, I'll need to refill the gas. All right, the tires are done. And as you can tell, this scooter has many more problems, and I'm going to fix them all. So be sure to check out my other scooter repair videos.